Yes, from the Tandem, welcome back to this live session um, of question and answers and uh, unclutching. So before we start, let's open up the session by invoking Guru's grace, Swamiji's grace through the Sadguru Vandanam. If you wish to learn these mantras, there is a link in the description. Um, it's called opening and closing mantras, so you can learn the meaning and how to chant them. Let's begin. Nityanandam paramasukhadam kevalam jnanamurtim dvandvatitam gagana sadrsham tattvamasya dilakshyam ekam nityam vimalamachalam sarvadhi sakshi bhutam Bhavati tam triguna rahitam Sadgurum tam namami Yes. So again, welcoming you to this live session. So it's an open question live session. So you can uh, drop any of your questions in the comments below. Sincere questions. And I'll share the various clicks and cognitive shifts I had. Uh, through the initiations of Swamiji and through uh, whatever Swamiji has been revealing with all of us um, in the daily satsangs and um, so yes before we start let's have a quick listen 40 seconds of Swamiji always reminding us and uh, for us to remember the space of unclutching Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity, tiredness is mental activity, feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that, just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you, the pure space. Yes. So unclutching is very important. Always cherishing the space of unclutching uh, throughout our day. Give me a moment. Yes. So that's why Swamiji is constantly um, enriching us and initiating us into the space of unclutching. Unclutching is the way to go beyond mind so we can stop experiencing any form of sufferings and ups and downs, loneliness, tiredness, laziness, boredom, all these uh, different levels of mental activities uh, will be uh, dropped just by cherishing the space of unclutching. Actually, um, I received two questions outside of the live session so I was I'm going to uh, share some of the uh, powerful clicks and cognitions uh, that I received from Swamiji regarding these and um, yeah to bring more clarity and uh, remove potential doubts so the first question is why is unclutching not suppressing these emotions and incompletions and there was also the dimension of um, why not just uh, going through the experience. So let us sit a moment. Yes. So, so this is basically the understanding and clarity I received from Swamiji regarding this idea of suppressing. Um, unclutching is not suppressing. So one, di one dimension um, which is very important is that when you unclutch, again, you're not engaging with the mental activity. Suppressing means engaging with this mental activity. Something comes up and you push it back down. But Swamiji clearly shares that unclutching is not is about not creating, not sustaining, and not destroying any thought or emotion. If they happen, they happen, just like a bubble. 
uh, in a water tank. It is created, it travels towards the surface, and at the surface, it vanishes, it disappears. In the process of creation, sustenance, and destruction, when you unclutch, you're not supposed to engage with any of these processes. Suppressing means, uh, as far as I, I, the click I got, the suppressing is a form of destruction, is you're trying to destroy something which is happening. Unclutching is not about that. Unclutching, you should not infuse any energy into the thoughts or emotions. If they are there, they are there. You watch them come, you watch them go. Same goes with the emotions. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a space of... Space of Paramashivoham. The space of pure consciousness where you are just... Um, witnessing the whole happening. Not clutching to it. You experience it, but you don't clutch to it. You unclutch from it. Because when we clutch to emotions, we start to... F the emotion drags us where it, it is going. Same goes with the thought. When you clutch to the thought, you are dragged in the direction in which the thought is going. But when you unclutch, it's like... Uh, one example I, I was giving some time back was... Um, I lived for two years in Vietnam, and in Vietnam there's a... There's a, there's a practice that a lot of people do uh, is that they sit at the coffee shop and they have these coffee shops set up next to streets where they have tables and chairs on the sideway, uh, sidewalk and uh, people just sit there and uh, order whatever they wish to order and they just sit and watch people moving they watch the cars, the bicycles, the people walking and the traffic there is not at all like in western countries, right? it's, it's all over the place so it, there's a lot of things happening, but you're just there witnessing the whole thing unclutched. So that's the kind of click I got uh, regarding the space of unclutching. It's not that you're uh, denying or destroying or trying to create or trying to make something last longer or less or yes. It's just about you just sit there as a witness like consciousness just watching the happening and that gives a lot of tremendous uh, serenity and powerfulness it's it's like it also one of the experience i got is that it it makes you realize that you don't need to engage with everything around you and you will not die or things won't go bad if you do not engage with it you don't have to engage with everything which is happening around you you consciously decide what you want to get engaged with, what you don't want to get engaged with, and you engage or disengage, you clutch or unclutch. But everything should be from a conscious decision. But for that, you need to have a certain powerfulness, a certain restfulness, a certain serenity. And the space of unclutching gives you that. So you go into the space of unclutching, you enter into that space, and then you consciously decide what you're going to do. And one of the important things Swamiji was sharing is that um, the more you get in touch or romance with the space of unclutching, the space of unclutching becomes your default parking spot. So by default, you will always come back into the unclutching. When that happens, then you carry the space of unclutching everywhere you go. In every action you go, you can clutch to a situation. The moment you decide to stop to clutch, whoop, you right away fall back into unclutching. It becomes your default parking slot, parking spot. So, um, so it is not. It is not suppression. Suppression is a mental activity, and uh, it is a form of trying to destroy. Uh, but we don't. The unclutching is not about that. That's what Swamiji shared, and uh, it's all about just, just. Just unclutching. I mean, it's a little like as long as he gives the example, right? A gear, uh, you clutch into gear one, gear two, gear three, or you unclutch and come back to neutral. So that's pretty much the visualization. You unclutch and things are happening, but you don't have to respond. If somebody's yelling, you don't have to respond. If somebody's whispering, you don't have to respond. If somebody's doing something, you don't have to respond. If somebody is not doing anything, you don't have to respond. You, you only need to respond if you consciously decide to respond. And if, if that response is aligned to the reality you want to create for yourself, to the, to the manifestation that you want to have in your life. So that was one of the main click 
uh, main clicks I got about this um, this unclutching. So and and one of the main reasons why going through the experience and completing by going through the experience uh, is is not the best way because it's going to take you forever because mind is always going to create something and if you have to go and experience everything you're never it's like you're never going to get out and end of the day and Swamiji shares in reality all these things are complete delusions but you don't realize it initially that's why you feel that's why you're clutching to it but if you decide if you start to unclutch you will start to realize everything is a delusion then once you realize the more and more you realize that the more you experience that the more you will you realize that you have the power to consciously create whatever you want you are you don't need to be nobody is going to be able to drag you into whatever they're doing only if you decide to consciously engage, you will consciously engage. So you regain that powerfulness. You regain the capacity and the realization that you can manifest the life you want for yourself. So unclutching is very important for that reason. So that was one of the main clicks I got uh, regarding that. So unclutching is the way to go. Uh, we have another question here. Yes. Uh, question about mushrooms. If you have to eat for some reason, how to compensate by food for its tamasic effect of the mushroom with sadvic food help to balance the dosha? Okay, uh, mushrooms. Yes, so let us sit. Mushroom is, is not part of the diet which uh, Swamiji uh, inspires us to follow. So yes, let us just sit a few moments. Invoke Swamiji. So, as far as I recall, one of the main thing regarding mushrooms that Swamiji was sharing, it was not necessarily the tamasic nature, the tamas, but um, it was the fact that it has some form of muscle memory because it is created out of a lot of uh, intense bacterial uh, activity. It has a form of muscle memory, so eating that makes uh it doesn't help you to clean your muscles your muscle memory from uh life negative experiences such as fear uh anxiety uh, rage uh, anger all these emotions which leave chemicals in your system which generates chemicals in your systems these chemicals get stored in your muscles and and the more these chemicals flood your muscles the more it is easy for you to come back into that state of uh, low emotions so that's the main reason why Swamiji is telling us not to engage with mushroom eating now um, I, I I don't have uh, specific knowledge about sattvic and Ayurvedic food and all that but I mean if you have to eat mushrooms you can I mean you don't have to you can put them aside or you can reduce um, if you're not following that diet that Swamiji gave after receiving initiation uh, which you should plan to get because receiving initiation from the master is very important uh, for you to be successful in your spiritual path. Uh, but uh, if you haven't received the initiation, uh, I mean, just try to eat as less as possible. Just try to eat as less as possible. Try to eat as much sadvic food as possible. Recently, Swamiji was sharing that really listen to your system when you digest so i'm just says you should eat food which your intestine intestine uh, enjoys not your mouth not your tongue um, some foods if you really bring awareness when you digest you will see they put you in a more of a sleepy mode or a heavy mode or just agitated mode so avoid avoid this food um, have the experience every day you can kind of focus a little bit on your experience of digestion and how the body feels uh, for me recently i've changed um a few things and one of the things i realized which my intestine was not was making me heavy uh was instance for instance potatoes potatoes and um pastas i stopped consuming those so now i'm pretty much uh what if i eat solid food it will be uh dosas which is basically uh, pancake made of rice, lentils, and uh, chickpeas, and then 
yeah the vegetables it depends but vegetables that uh, for me I feel very easy to digest and very quickly and don't leave a lot of shit in your stomach so I'm just says don't have a shit stomach so for me zucchinis are very good uh, zucchinis is something I really really uh, would recommend as far as my experience goes so uh, yeah just try to just listen to that and and try to reduce the mushrooms I mean no I, I mean I don't know what is your situation but I don't think anybody is putting the mushrooms into your mouth so you can you can always put them aside and say no I, I'm deciding to you know attend to my health in a more intense way more sincere way and uh, I'm trying to avoid mushrooms for various reasons you can always enrich people also about that depending on the situation in which you are in so again inviting people to uh, write their questions in the comments this is a live open Q&A sessions so I answer sessions I answer questions um, with whatever clicks and cognitions I got from Swamiji so yes let us have again a quick listen of the space of unclutching decide to unclutch not to follow any thoughts emotions triggering of mind and mental activities inside even laziness is a mental activity tiredness is mental activity feeling Board is mental activity. Do not follow any of that. Just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you. The pure space. Yes. So sorry about that. Been having some issues quality of the stream is a little bit affected by that yes so let's hope stream stabilizes so um i love mushrooms the only thing is which turns vegetarian is the planet Earth entering into the fifth dimension? I do not know what you are referring to by fifth dimension. Uh, in Hinduism, I mean, Hinduism brings this powerful cognition of multi-dimensional uh, universe, which means all dimensions happen simultaneously. So there's no such thing of entering into a dimension and coming out into another dimension. That's not how uh, how, how Hinduism or how Sanatana Hindu Dharma um, shares of how the uh, universe exists. Now there are different phases in the in the in the flow of the cosmos, so that's different. But that has nothing to do with the dimensions. Now we have another question. Uh, Nityanandam, if enlightenment is possible without renouncing world, then why sannyas? Ah, yes, very good question. See, let's invoke Swamiji. So this is the main click I have about the lifestyle of sannyas. For those who are not aware, sannyas is the life of a monk living the monastic vows, the Hindu monastic vows. Um, towards the experience of enlightenment. So the question is, if the world is, if it is possible to experience enlightenment in the world, then why 
without renouncing the world and wise sannyas. So these are the major cognitive shifts I had about sannyas. Engaging with the world is not a problem, but you need to engage with the world from the right context, which you do not have unless you have been raised in the Gurukul of an enlightened master, which is not my case, and most likely not the case of a lot of us uh, here on planet Earth as of now. So when you don't have the right context, Swamji says, it is so important to experience unclutching when you're young because you need to experience your consciousness as a solid experience before engaging too much with the world. Because if you engage with the world too much before experiencing your consciousness, uh, you get lost in the world and uh, you lose the capacity to experience, you, you kind of distance yourself from your consciousness. And, and when you distance yourself from your consciousness, you don't realize that you are the source of the reality you're manifesting. And therefore you create a mess in your life and then you're stuck in that mess and you basically lose both, Swamji says. You lose consciousness and you lose the world. Now, my own, my the main click I had about sannyas is um, sannyas is like the Swamiji says is the uh, the royal path towards enlightenment. Uh, there's many paths towards enlightenment. Sannyas is the royal one. Um, one of the main things I can share from my experience is that the lifestyle of sannyas uh, tackles the major root patterns we have, root incompletions we have about life in general quickly by putting you in situations where you have to right away bring awareness to these patterns. So um, it's basically like, it, it depends of course of why, you, why the being has decided to assume the human body different people would have decided to assume the human body for various purposes. Of course, the purpose of a human body is enlightenment. So enlightenment is always the goal. But uh, so different beings can assume the body for various reasons and they seek to fulfill and uh, to experience uh, a certain dimension of life, a certain not dimension in terms of dimensions, but a certain aspect of life uh, because they want to experience they, they are seeking fulfillment by experiencing this aspect but ultimately everything le leads to enlightenment which is the realization that you are paramashiva and then that is the complete fulfillment now sannyas is uh yeah it's a it, it's what well, if you the beings who decide to take their their the human body to experience sannyas they need sannyas lifestyle <laughs> right because sannyas lifestyle it's a it's a conscious decision like every other lifestyle uh, of course, that doesn't mean we have made the decision consciously, but it is a lifestyle and it's a lifestyle which is oriented towards you experiencing your uh, space of Paramashivo. Um, and back in the days, Swamiji was sharing in the Gurukul, before 21, all kids were made Brahmacharis, means they don't engage with the other gender, uh, they don't engage with the other gender and they explore and discover themselves. And if the Gurukul kid had um, spiritual experiences, strong spiritual experiences within his life as a Brahmachari, then he would be initiated into the path of sannyas because that being would have assumed the human body to experience um, other dimensions and other frequencies uh, more. That is why he would manifest spiritual experiences uh, more than other beings. So for him, he would be initiated into sannyas and he would be taught, um, I don't, Tras Swamiji was saying, Brahma Sutras was being taught to these uh, Gurukul Brahmacharis who were experiencing a lot of spiritual experiences and uh, mystical experiences. And uh, other Gurukul kids who were not necessarily experiencing more uh, mystical experiences, they were taught the Kama Sutra, which is the 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 art of relating with another being and they would go and most of the time become householders grihastas, and they would fulfill and they would burn their karmas or fulfill their purpose of life of assuming the human body by uh, living the grihastha life with a strong knowledge of how to successfully uh, bring a grihastha life to completion so 
It is important to know whether you are going in the path of sannyas or the path of grihastha, you need to have a very strong context of that path in order to uh, walk that path smoothly and successfully and reach the completion and at the end uh, get the liberation that you uh, that that we all seek when we assume the human body. So that would that were the that that were the main clicks I had I had about sannyas. Sannyas is like see I'll give an example right as a sannyasi you make the vow of brahmacharya. Now many people in the world brahmacharya means is is badly translated as celibacy. Uh, Somji says it's basically living like a god or being experiencing brahman being one with brahman. And Swamiji says that the path of sannyas is the path where uh, you don't um, allow the life energy, the Kundalini Shakti, to express itself in the way, in the re reproductive way, and, but and you straight away bring it towards the brain to experience enlightenment. So that is in, in more of a yogic uh, language. That's what is the Brahmacharya. But many people in the world, they are they they truly believe and they are convinced that uh, that lust is normal and that uh, and it has to be there the click I got from what Swamiji shared was lust is there until you reach a certain amount of uh, existential knowledge which is given to you by the Guru and through the experience you get through initiations so Swamiji was saying, lust keeps you integrated when you do not live consciously. When you do not live consciously, you are pieces. Your being is like pieces. To keep these pieces together, you need a strong energy. Lust is that strong energy which keeps you together even though you are in pieces. But the more and more you do completion and the more and more you live the cosmic, principle, uh, uh, cosmic principles, um, align yourself to these principles, live them, radiate them and all that, you start to reintegrate yourself. These pieces come back together as a whole. And the more you become a whole, the less the, the lust energy is no longer required because now you are living, the, your consciousness, your awareness becomes the glue which holds you together. So it's, it's just about, uh, you know, initiations of the Guru and seeking and contemplating on higher truth cosmic principles and uh, different the Mahavakyas and whatever Swamiji talks about in satsangs when you contemplate on that your vision about your you about the universe about Paramashiva everything expands and you start to see things uh, on a different level one example that for me is very striking is see if you walk on the street you will see things in a certain way if you go on top of a five uh, of a building, and if you look, you will have a different perspective. If you're a pigeon and fly above the city, you will have a different perspective. If you're an eagle and flies, I don't know the height at which eagles fly, but I know they fly very high. If you're an eagle and you and you look down, you will have different perspective. So the higher you go, the more you have a wider and bigger and broader vision. And that vision is important for you to understand the whole. And when you understand the whole, you understand your part and you understand the purpose also. So that's why the more and more you raise your consciousness, the more you, you go higher and higher and see things have a bigger vision, a broader vision. And that vision, uh, it gives you the clarity, the power uh, to handle life and to make and, and to live a conscious life and to handle life properly. So that's why it's very important to contemplate on what the Guru shares and uh, and radiate, live the Guru's instructions, live the initiations, because all these instructions and initiations are there for you to raise your uh, your awareness, your consciousness, uh, make your make the experience of your consciousness more solid for you. Right now, our experience of the body is a very solid experience. Okay, if somebody slaps you in the face, you will have pain, and that pain seems very real, and it's a very pretty solid experience. In the same way, we have to work towards making consciousness as a solid experience. And the more and more it becomes a solid experience, uh, the more you will realize 
your, your cognitions will will change. Your cognitions will change uh, because you will see you there's you will realize the level of powerfulness that that brings in your life, and everything will change. The more your consciousness changes, the more everything in your life changes because you realize that you are much more than what you think you are, and and that naturally changes many things. So that were the main. Uh, yeah, that these these are the two of the clicks which are uh, which I would share about why sannyas. It's possible to live in the world without renouncing, but you still you have to be taught how to live in the world. Uh, the the knowledge of how to live a grahasta, the context of what is the life of grahasta, the context of how to relate to your spouse, and all that all that has to be has to be uh, grasped in order to bring that lifestyle to fruition also um, so yes so that is why the education vedic education the gurukul system is so important because it gives you that knowledge from the start so that whatever path you choose uh, the grahista path or the sannyas path um, you will uh, be successful in it so that's how i would uh, that's what i would have to share about Sanyas. It's like it's like you can grow food without organic fertilizer, but if you put organic fertilizer, is there, your experience of growing food will be different. So sannyas is a path where your 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 only objective is to experience your consciousness. When you, when you live the Grahesta life or the life in the world, experiencing your consciousness is one of the things you want to experience. But you have other objectives as well. So it's like, it's different. It's different. Sannyas is, is more like a focus, more intense towards experiencing your consciousness. So that is why sanyas, the path of Sannyas is there. The path of Sannyas was introduced to planet Earth by uh, Kapila Mahamuni. He's the one who introduced this lifestyle for those beings who, who who assumed the body because they wanted to experience that. So it's a it's a it's a lifestyle designed for that to be successful as fast as possible. Uh, because there's al also another component is being liberated while in the body and being liberated when you leave the body. See, end of the day, the purpose is liberation. Whether you, are, whether you get liberated when you leave the body or liberated while you are in the body, you are liberated, you experience moksha, which is the purpose of the human body. So both are there, uh, but there's a difference between uh, being liberated when you leave the body and being liberated when you are in the body. One thing that Swanji was sharing is like for this uh, 30 minute unclutching, he was saying that for my devotees, 30 minutes of unclutching is enough because you're working for your enlightenment. But for the Kailasavasis and my Brahmacharis and all that and my Sannyasis, you guys have to be have to be in the space of unclutching 24-7 because you're not only working for your enlightenment, you're working to hold the space to enlighten others. So it's a different context. It's a different context. So yes, that's what I would share about Sannyas. Sannyas is great. It's a myth. That uh, that uh, it's a myth that you need to uh, to have this uh, uh, that energy active at the muladhara level in order to be healthy, and that uh, any lifestyle other than that lifestyle is not natural. You know, some people say that being uh, practicing brahmacharya is an unnatural lifestyle, and it's not true. It's not true. Um, it's not true. That's all. <laughs> One more thing I wanted to share uh, before going to another question I received offline was um, See, uh, people sometimes have the idea that uh, monks or sannyasis do not contribute to, uh, to the world and they're just doing their own thing and all that. 
But Swamiji clearly shares that that is, that is uh, not true at all. Um, the path of a grahista, when you are a grahista and your family, a householder and you have your family and you create a generation and name and a generation and you have a certain expertise, you contribute to society in a certain way. And uh, you enrich the society in a certain way. Uh, and the responsibility of a sannyasi is also to enrich the society, but with a different dimension, with the spiritual dimension, consciousness dimension. So uh, putting emphasis on that dimension and enriching the society with that dimension, sharing this knowledge with people uh, so that they can have uh, better lives. So, so th for that reason, the path of sannyasi is required because uh, a being who, who decides to do that uh, he needs to be trained in order to handle himself before he can start to handle others in that dimension, that the spiritual dimension or the consciousness-oriented dimension. So for that reason, uh, the path of sannyas is also very important. So again, reminding this is a live session. You can ask questions if you want in the, uh, in the chat. So another question I got uh, was about fear of rejection and uh, being taken for granted. So let's invoke Swamiji. Yes. So, fear of being rejected. One of the main clicks I got um, Oh yes, maybe just a quick answer before going into that one. How to stop visuals running in uh, the mind when closing the eyes for unclutching. So that's basically the first thing which we kind of have to grasp is that um, you should not try to stop the visuals running. So trying to stop the visuals running, the click I got is like, this is us trying to destroy what is happening. And Swamji clearly says, unclutching is not about destroying thoughts, not about destroying emotions or getting rid of emotions or suppressing emotions or suppressing visuals. It's just like the visual comes, the visual goes. You don't clutch to it. If, if, you, if the visual comes and you clutch to it, then, then you go where the visual goes. And that should be avoided. It comes, you watch it come, you watch it go. You don't clutch to it. And the more you unclutch, the more, um, the, the more the, the, these visuals get exhausted, these thoughts get exhausted, the emotions get exhausted, because we don't infuse more energy into it by clutching. When we clutch, we infuse energy into it. When you unclutch, you stop infusing energy into it. So whatever energy they still have because of whatever hangover we have about life, that energy gets exhausted in the space of unclutching because they're moving, they're happening because they still have some form of energy within you. If you, if you, uh, if you allow it to happen and you don't give more energy, then it will exhaust itself, reach its completion, and it will disappear. It will, it will dissipate from your space. So it's not about trying to uh, be visual free. It's just about unclutch, unclutch. If there are thoughts, unclutch. If there are no thoughts, unclutch. If you have emotions, unclutch. If there's no emotions, unclutch. If you have visuals, unclutch. If you don't have visuals, unclutch. So it's like that. It's not like, a, oh, I should not have any thoughts, I should not have any emotions, I should not have visuals. Um, that's, that's clutching, that's not unclutching. So unclutching is all about uh, just whatever happens, happens, but you do not engage with it in any way. You just witness it to a certain extent. You just witness it. You don't engage with it in any way. That's the click I got. 
it feels like in a dream state i don't have any control yeah that happens uh initi- i mean it, yeah that's the thing because when you do unclutching um you can start to fall into dream daydream state like you're going your you're you're going away from the uh, the wakeful state and you go into dream state so you have to you have to it's it's uh, unclutching is all about raising your awareness you invoke swamiji uh before you do the unclutching you invoke swamiji and you ask him to raise you beyond these lower states um and when these states happen you you realize that they're happening the moment you realize they're happening you unclutch from it you ask swamiji to just pull you out of it and you unclutch from it um it's like it's an awareness and at some point that awareness like i shared was gets more and more solid and you become more and more uh it, it just like you can see it and when you see it then you can decide to indulge in it or not indulge in it in whatever experience is coming so um so yeah so that's why there's a there, that's why the form of will persistence and constantly practicing unclutching is important is to be able to unclutch from these states it's like swaji was sharing even in the clips i was playing earlier that even tiredness and boredom is a form of um, is a form of uh, mental activity, which for me, like initially, I didn't cognize it like that. Then I was like, oh, but these the mental activities are are not like the usual ones because when you start to become lazy or tired, you really fall for it. Like you really fall into that space. But you should be very clear, like, oh, I'm feeling tired. Oh, tiredness is mental activity, and then poop. It's a, it's a, it raises your awareness. That's why doing it every day, 30 minutes is important and constantly as much as possible throughout the day, remembering yourself and developing this life positive pattern of always remembering to unclutch, 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 unclutch. And the more you do, uh, the more it starts to become a, a solid experience for you. That's what I would share. So, uh, yes, just to go to that other question. Fear of rejection. The main powerful cognition Swamiji uh, gave me regarding this is Paramashiva is real. Swamiji is real. Which means, see, when we, are, when we have a fear of rejection, most of the time we feel like we are not going to get what we want. Our reality is not going to get manifested. So at that moment, what you basically agree upon, what you basically cognize is that um, Paramashiva is not real because Swamji shares that Paramashiva always fulfills what you want. He's causeless auspiciousness. He's auspicious to you for no reason. So whatever is happening is auspicious. When we cherish fear of, uh, of rejection or fear of failure, we are basically cognizing that Paramashiva is not auspicious, which is not Paramashiva. So we're cognizing that life is not auspicious. So the powerful cognition to be remembered so that we have the strength to engage with the situation even though the fear of rejection might be there is Paramashiva is real. Everything that happens is auspicious. So trust, you know, hold on to the Guru's feet, hold on to Paramashiva and engage with the situation with the deep trust in Paramashiva, deep trust in Guru. And you will see whatever happens, you will realize it ends up being auspicious because life is auspicious. If you if you dare to engage with it from the space of completion. But if we are, if we cherish incompletions, then we will not engage with it properly. And because we don't engage with it properly, we will not be able to realize the, 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 the auspiciousness which uh, Paramashiva is making available to us at that moment. And that's where we fall into delusion. So it's all about powerful cognition. 
Fear of rejection? Paramashiva is real. Paramashiva is real. Paramashiva is causeless auspiciousness. So there's nothing to fear about. Just engage with life fully. Give everything you have in that situation. Don't allow fear to make you decide to give half because you're afraid that if you give full full and if you get rejected is going to be too painful or you're going to lose too much or you know these fears don't allow fear to make you decide not to give your all in whatever you decide to do give your all the rest is paramashiva's grace swamiji's grace guru's grace but you give your all. Do not go into something with fear. Because fear will, will, will stop the flow of the Kundalini inside of you. And when the Kundalini is, is not flowing properly, you will not be in the right space to listen. You will not be able to respond to life properly because you will be caught in your own delusion. So that's, that's, that's what I, that's the part, that's the cognition I would share regarding um uh, regarding unclutching uh sorry regarding fear of being rejected um yes i'll come back to unclutching in a moment i just want to address the second part of this question which is um the topic of being taken for granted same thing fear of rejection being taken for granted it there these are basically uh thought currents which makes you decide not to give your all because you're afraid of perhaps the pain you would experience or uh, the failure you would experience or the waste of time you would experience of the waste of resources you would experience so there's always a big fear which makes you believe that which makes you believe that it is not a good idea for you to give yourself 100% but the powerful cognition that uh, that I got from Swamiji was like but you are Paramashiva and you are manifesting your reality whether you are aware of it or not you are manifesting your reality of course you should work to become aware so that you can uh, alter your reality at will so as long as you're not aware you will not even understand or cognize that you are manifesting your reality you will th you think that things outside of you are responsible for what you're experiencing which is not true so when you remember that you are Paramashiva and you are manifesting your reality, then you can manifest whatever you need when you need it. You don't need to worry. You have everything which is required to manifest what you need when you need it. And that brings tremendous powerfulness, tremendous serenity, tremendous freedom. You don't need to, Swamiji says, like one of the things which the reason why, mm, I think it was in an, uh, ask the avatar satsang discourse he was sharing I do not have anxiety about the future that's why I'm successful I do not fear the future I don't have anxiety about the future that's why I'm successful in everything that I do so when we drop the fear of the future anxiety for the future you live the present moment fully and you will, re you will realize that everything you need to get what you want done, you have it. But you need to be aware of that. You need to realize that. We don't realize that initially. So that's why initiation of the Guru, living Guru's vox, uh, Guru's words, living the cosmic principles, all these things are very important for us to realize that we have everything that, it need, that we need to get what we need to get done to get it done so so it's very important very important yes going back uh, another additive to this unclutching question is it all right to have coffee before unclutching it's an interesting question so let's unclutch and get the answer Let's listen to Swamiji for a moment. Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of 
mind and mental activities inside even laziness is a mental activity tiredness is mental activity feeling bored is mental activity do not follow any of that just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you the pure space See, again, just now I was sharing about fear of the future. And, um, and that's an example of fear of the future. If we had past experiences where we get into a dream state or a sleep state during unclutching, um, then the hangover from that experience, when we decide to do unclutching again, we remember that hangover and we project it in the future means in the session of unclutching which we are about to start and from that fear you decide to um, to take a cup of coffee I don't think taking a cup of coffee is bad but taking a cup of coffee because of fear of going into that state uh, that should be attended that should that should be completed uh, the f there should not be any fear like oh no I, I it's like I'm going to collapse so because of that I have to take this then it it uh, I mean it should be experienced you should experience it but I would definitely share I would definitely say like bring a lot of awareness of the space you hold just before getting into the space of unclutching and don't project failure for yourself don't project that oh because yesterday I was daydreaming today I'm going to daydream no don't project that just before the before what I would what I what I would share is before you enter into the space of un, of unclutching you sit with yourself and you uh, you you engage with Swamiji and say okay Swamiji in the last few sessions I I got into a dream state where I'm not able to control and I I I'm avoiding to come back to the space of uh, the space of unclutching so today uh, just you know take care so that I don't fall into these states you consciously uh, consciously declare that um, consciously declare that you are um, you're completing with you're completing with the fear that these states might come back and interfere with your decision to uh, to be a, to do unclutching. Another thing I can add also is the more and more you you become conscious. See, just even that process of realizing that you have fear, you have anxiety about the future. This is a form of anxiety about the future. You're afraid that the deep sleep or that sleep or dream state will interfere into your decision to unclutch dropping that fear being aware of that fear and declaring that I no longer want to cherish that fear I am doing completion with that fear Swamiji I am putting this fear of the future at your feet and I declare that I no longer want this fear to interfere in my space and into my conscious decision to do unclutching or anything in my life so constantly declaring completion about that now you now, now that it was if that is the case now that it was brought to your awareness you just constantly declare that you no longer want to cherish this inside your inner space and you will see uh, it will go away it will go away if you consciously declare stuff it will go away so that's that's what i would say i i wouldn't say like uh, taking coffee or not coffee is right or wrong but, the, but the, the space from which you decide to take the coffee or the space that you have before you engage into unclutching, that space has to be as pure as possible, as, as powerful as possible. Yes, we're getting another question. I think the Facebook Live is glitched. So yes, another question is, um, in other subject, can you share in other video your insight about Samskara Dharana Kriya, please? Yes, let's... Come 
come back to the space of Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Oneness with Paramashiva Yes, so this is one of the main insights um, one of the main experience and cognitive shift I got through the process of Samskara Dharana Kriya. So for those who don't know, you can uh, check it out. Uh, check it out on Swamiji's YouTube channel. There's many videos where Swamiji shares about Samskara Dharana Kriya. But basically it's a process where you relive pains of the past um, in a certain way to... Uh, to remove the hangover and the memory from your from your from you so that these pains no longer affect your life in any form and one of the main click i got regarding that is these processes are very powerful for you to realize how powerful you are as consciousness because we are consciousness ultimately so it makes you experience the power of your of consciousness which is you basically your power and um, how it does that is that the Swamiji was sharing that when we do not live fully, we have hangovers from experiences. You know, if you have fear and you don't live fear fully, there will be a hangover of fear sitting in you and try to express itself in the times which comes. And same goes with any other emotion and all that. So at some point, when we, when we are not taught how to live properly, we build up a baggage of hangovers which is constantly following us in everything that we do and they always interfere in the flow of energy uh, at that moment and it does not allow us to live in, a, in, in fulfillment. And Samskara Nadarna Kriya is all about um, daring, I, that's my experience, but it's daring to experience something that you feel you don't want to experience but that deep down you still cherish you still cherish because you still allow that hangover to remain inside of your bio memory or muscle memory most of the time we are unconscious and we it's uh, it's unconscious we are not aware of that but that is the truth we cherish it that's why it's still there so um so it's all about it's a science it's a technique to realize that you are consciousness and that you can just consciously decide to relive a certain emotion, a certain situation, a certain pain and exhaust that pain in a very at that during the process and after the process if you authentically did the process that hangover is gone you have liberated yourself from that pain which was sitting inside your muscle memory or bio memory for years and for lives for years or lives so it's a very powerful process just to exhaust the baggage it's like uh, when you have backlog right you have too much work sitting in the background and you're stuck doing something and that's the same thing that's the click i got the backlog is the hangovers. You have so many emotions, unfulfilled emotions, trying to get your attention so that they can express themselves fully and get their completion, their fulfillment, their exhaustion. They want to get exhausted. Uh, and Samskara Nadana Kriya is basically you deciding to sit and to stop everything and to attend to your backlog, to attend to your, to, to your baggage of hangover and just clean it once and for all so that you can go back to life with without any hangovers even for instance that example about unclutching and the coffee and the fear of uh, of the future anxiety about the future that's a hangover you wanted to do unclutching you did unclutching you realized that when you were doing unclutching you were going into a dream state where you were not uh you were no longer deciding to unclutch so you were clutching into whatever that dream was and then at some point you come back to your senses to your awareness then you 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 come to the conclusion oh i didn't unclutch i got lost into some other space and then the next day you decide to do unclutching but there is a there is a form of fear a form of pain which you experienced the day before because 
you were not able to experience the complete the, the state of unclutching in the way you wanted it to experience it and that pain was not you didn't really realize it you brushed it aside and you moved on to some other thing so that pain has to be dropped and completed and it doesn't take much time to complete actually because our con consciousness is very powerful so it's not like uh, Swamiji was sharing, right? 10,000 10, years of darkness can be removed with one second with a matchstick, with a light. So it's not like, uh, oh, I, I built up a baggage for so many years, it's going to take me so much time to burn it. No, consciousness does not operate with the same rules. So it, it can just burn through a whole thing in like few moments. Actually, it can do it instantly when you are fully in tune with your consciousness. It's, it just instantly can burn everything. So... Um, so like that, the pain of, for instance, failure, if you feel that having dreams while doing unclutching means you did not unclutch, when you realize that you were dreaming while unclutching, you, you experience a certain form of pain that, oh, I was not able to unclutch properly, for instance, I'm just giving an example. And that pain of not being, not having, not having successfully unclutched, um, the next day when you do unclutching, if you did not complete with that pain, the memory, some hangover is there and that hangover is telling you, oh, be careful, you're going to go through this again. And, and then you no longer go into the space of unclutching, into the decision of doing the unclutching with full-fledged like inspiration and all, out, all in, you know, a part of you is like, oh, but be careful, this is going to happen. And so that's why the samskarana dharana kriya process is so important, is basically to burn uh, the pains of the past which we did not most of the time we don't identify them as pains that's why we don't attend to them but they are pains and and they they come back to us in the form of hangovers and it's only when you have a hangover that you can realize that oh yeah there's a form of pain there so you just have to just consciously burn it consciously see it. you put it at Swamiji's feet just invoke Swamiji and third eye and just tell Swamiji okay this is there I no longer want to experience this in my life so let it be cleansed let it be removed and then you go into your next uh, decision yes so we have another question I have used smoked marijuana for meditation and other purposes for years October will be my first ever post childhood month with no smoking or alcohol. It seems like a great time to do this. I would appreciate if you were you wish me luck and let me know if you have any advice. Yes. So let's invoke Swamiji for a moment. Yes, so blessings. It's a very, uh, it's a very good decision to drop uh, smoking marijuana and alcohol, so you'll be successful. And uh, one thing that is very important to remember and to cognize is that every time you experience another state of consciousness through a substance, um, you are not, uh, you are not experiencing your consciousness, your powerfulness. On the contrary, you become more and more powerless. So that is why Swamiji is strongly uh, saying that no, do not use any substances to experience any other states of consciousness. You, if you want to experience another state of consciousness, you should experience through your consciousness. You should not need any external factors uh, such as like drugs or alcohol and stuff like that. Because not only... Uh, it does not give you a real experience of it, but um, it damages your body. And the more and more you do it, the less, the more and more your body gets damaged. So, uh, so then, so that's not good. <laughs> that's that's just not good. So it's all about coming to a space of uh, of powerfulness where you don't depend on anything. Only you and your connection with Guru, with Paramashiva is enough to fulfill anything in your life. That is real. Uh, that is the real way of experiencing your consciousness. Everything else will put us in various forms of delusion. So remembering that, it's important. It's important to remember that. 
when we make decisions uh, but yeah definitely that's great i mean dropping these things and 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 doing meditation and going towards experiencing your consciousness without any of these external supports that's amazing that's amazing so uh, yes blessings for that tatastu so be it yes so i will close the session for today thanking you all of you uh, for joining and uh, hoping to see you tomorrow again it's a live q a question so anything you drop the comments i'll share whatever cognitive shifts i got from swamji's initiations and uh, and satsangs and experiences since i've been living with him the last uh, couple of years now so uh yes very thankful for you to joining in hoping you to see you tomorrow we'll close this session with the purna mantra if you want to get access to the links of the mahavakya which is the sacred chant which is playing in the background check the links in the description and again also if you want to learn the two basic mantras that we use to open and close uh sessions uh again the link is also in the description below so now we'll be chanting the purna mantra which is the mantra for closure to just remember that everything is completion and that whatever happens everything is in the space of completion paramashiva is causeless auspiciousness and we are paramashiva om nityananda paramashivoham om pur namada pur namidam purnat purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sarvam Bhagavat Shri Nityananda Paramashivam Padukar Panamastu Om Nityanandam Yes, thank you again. I'll now see you in the next session. Nityanandam, be blissful.